I've talked a lot about my transition, very, very extensively. Sometimes I almost feel like every video in this room starts with kind of an abridged version of my coming out story. But what I haven't talked about really nearly as much is my sexual orientation. I identify as pansexual. I have since maybe my sophomore year of high school, but I don't think I've ever actually told my sort of pansexual coming out story here on YouTube. And it's really kind of because I don't have one. There wasn't really a definitive moment for me where I realized that I was pansexual. And I feel like we hear a lot of coming out stories here on YouTube, and that's great because oftentimes they're really beautiful and can be really helpful for other folks. I know it was really nice for me to be able to hear other people's stories before I came out, but I feel like we don't hear nearly as much about those long, extended processes we sometimes have to take in order to fully understand our identities, where things happen much more gradually and slowly and there really isn't sort of an epiphany moment where everything makes sense. So I wanted to take a video to do that, to sort of tell my not coming out story as far as my sexual orientation goes. So for me, one of the first realizations about myself from a very young age was that I was absolutely attracted to women. I did not date or have crushes on boys at a young age. There was absolutely no interest. I remember being very visibly disgusted whenever it was even suggested that I had a crush on one of my friends. And I remember kind of realizing around sixth grade when I learned what gay meant and realized it was something that could apply to me that, oh, those girls I thought I just really admired or wanted to be friends with, I was actually very attracted to. Not that much later when I learned what trans meant and learned that I was trans, that part of my identity became very closely tied to my attraction to women. Now, of course, if you've seen any of my other videos or you're queer yourself or know anything about the queer community, you probably know that sexual orientation and gender identity are not one and the same. They don't have to be tied or connected. But I came out like 10 years ago, maybe? Oh God, like 2008, 2009, a while ago. I was 12 at the time. So it was a lot harder to get access to information explaining that sort of thing to me. So I definitely remember when I first came out as trans, it was sort of a one-two step of I'm trans, I'm also attracted to girls. Like these, these are one and the same, these go together. In high school, I did eventually learn to separate sexual orientation and gender identity, but I still really just saw myself as a straight trans man. And I think at the time I really was. As far as my own identity goes, I'm not really one to say that, oh, I was always pansexual, I just didn't realize it, or I was always attracted to everybody. Now that might have been due to certain social factors and pressures, maybe I felt like I needed to exercise a certain degree of masculinity in order for my gender to be valid, and I kind of tied that masculinity to attraction to women. But I still don't think that makes that identity at that point in time in my life any less real. I really only started to question it when my partner in high school came out as genderqueer or non-binary or what have you and started exploring their own gender identity. They definitely did kind of get the wheels turning of, oh, you know, if, if I'm attracted to this person when they identify on the masculine spectrum or identify as male fully, um, you know, what does that mean for my sexual orientation? It was really just a gradual process from that point forward going into an open relationship and then being single for a while where I started to think, you know what? Like guys are cute too. Like I said at the beginning of this video, there really wasn't a definitive moment for me where all of that just came together. It was kind of a slow and steady process. Personally, I really like to use the word pansexual because it was coined in order to be inclusive of all gender identities. And as a trans person, that sits really well with me. But I do know that there are some folks that use the term bisexual and are also super open to dating trans and non-conforming folks. It's really just kind of a personal preference for me. I also just like how the word pansexual sounds. I don't know, it, it suits me, it's nice. But really the only kind of coming out moment for my pansexuality that I can remember is being in the car with my dad and talking about some sort of cute boy I was talking to on Tinder or maybe going out with, something like that. And he kind of looked at me and paused for a second and asked something along the lines of, so are you bi? Or, or like, a, so are you attracted to everybody? And I kind of just went, um, yeah, yeah, I guess so, yeah. 
That makes sense. And he was like, cool. And I was like, cool. And then we went to wherever we were going, getting bagels or burgers or something like that. Now, I like to talk about this because I think there are a lot of expectations and stereotypes surrounding all sorts of different sexual orientations. I know I personally have gotten a lot of questions along the lines of, well, you know, if you're attracted to guys, why did you transition in the first place? And I have a hard time explaining to people that my gender identity and who I am has nothing to do with who I like to mouth kiss. Like, I mean, they're kind of related because of experience and how I've maneuvered throughout my life and the people I relate to, but also just not not at all. They don't depend on one another. There's also tons of stereotypes that bi or pansexual people are confused and aren't gonna align themselves with one identity or another eventually. And I think there's a huge expectation to really have that revelation moment when you come to whatever your sexual orientation may be. Then it needs to be this huge thing you announce to people and you're probably very confused beforehand, but it's something that like has always been there and you've always felt. You remember that one friend you had as a kid who you were actually in love with, but like didn't realize it and couldn't say anything about it. But like for me, that wasn't the case. I always try to explain to people that your sexual orientation can change just as your varying degrees of romantic and sexual interest can. You know, we go through phases in our life where we just want to date, or we're really into hookups, or we're looking for a relationship, and that doesn't stay the same throughout our whole lives. I mean, it can, but it usually doesn't. And just in the same way, sexual orientations can change and move and shift, and it doesn't need to be that big of a deal. And I really hope that over time we we'll move into a world where it's not a big deal. It's, it's just a, a thing, like, you just like who you like, and it's, it's whatever. We're not there yet, but maybe, we'll see. Anyway, that's something I've been wanting to talk about for a while, a little experience and some thoughts of mine I wanted to share. If you like this video and you wanna see more of my face, feel free to hit subscribe. I'd love it if you did. I'd love to talk to you too in the comments down below. I'm always up for a conversation. Otherwise, I will see you next week.